Hello and welcome to this Mithra Money Securities Investment 101 course. This is Lecture 23, Modified Duration. Now, after our work on Macaulay's duration, some bond traders noticed a particular pattern. Let's just put up a couple of bonds here to show you that pattern. This is a one-year bond and there's one payment there. We don't even need to know roughly what that is. And let's put another bond up here. Let's put a two-year one up and... Again, another cash payment. It's not really that important what the cash payment is. Now, let's imagine that the prices of these two bonds went like this. Let's say that this one was $90. And this one down below was, say, $80. Let's say interest rates, the current yield to maturity, interest rate was 10%. Uh, and let's say that the durations of these two bonds was one for this one and two for this one, the Macaulay's durations. Now, what some people noticed was this. If interest rates went up by, say, 1% to 11%, then what would happen is that this one would go down to something approximately, let's not get too worried about the details, we'll see that later in Excel, $89. And this one would go down approximately $2. It would go down to, say, $78. And again, notice that there's something interesting going on with these durations here. And again, let us imagine that if these interest rates went down to, say, 9%, then this price would go up to, say, 91, approximately 91. And the one beneath would go up approximately $2. This one would go to approximately $82. And again, there's something very suggestive going on with these durations and these price changes. Now, it's not exactly a relationship between Macaulay's duration and the price changes and the interest rate changes, but if you modify Macaulay's duration slightly, then you get a figure which can give you very accurate uh, price changes across interest rates for your bonds, certainly across small interest rate changes. And the special term we're going to create on the spreadsheet in a couple of minutes' time is called modified duration. And the graph we can create looks something like this. And you'll see this in many different finance textbooks. But along the side, we'll get the bond price. And along the bottom, we'll get interest rates. Now, let's just put our interest rates on here again that we saw earlier. So we've got the 10% rate there. We've got the 11% rate here. And we've got the 9% right here and the prices we had let's just do one of the bonds the first price i think was something like 90 dollars so let's say 10 percent this particular bond was priced at 90 dollars what duration will tell you if you multiply things in a particular way it will give you a slope and again we'll do this on the spreadsheet very very soon it will predict that if you decrease interest rates to 9%, the price will go up to, say, approximately $91. And if you increase interest rates to, say, 11%, then the price will get to about there, and it will go to something like $89. Now, if we actually measure reality, reality might... This reality will do in pink. Reality might actually be this if we don't use the predictions, if we actually price the bonds. It might look something a bit more like this. That's where we get some effect called convexity. But over a short range, let's say from there to there, over that short range, the modified duration prediction of the price change will be very close to what it actually goes to when interest rates actually change. Now, you might say, well, why don't we just work out all the prices for all the bonds for all the different potential interest rate changes, well, that would be a monumental calculating effort. Remember, all bonds change all the time. Interest rates could change. Who knows what they could change to? If you tried to price every bond every day for every potential price movement, every computer data center in the world would be working flat out 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you still wouldn't be able to keep up. So we use these estimates. Most interest rates don't change that much. They change, you know, 0.1 of a percent or 0.05 of a percent, sometimes 25 basis points or a quarter of a percent in one day. So usually 99% of the time we're within this range. 
where the duration prediction is good enough to tell us what we think bond prices will be if interest rates change. And the prediction comes from basically you take the price, you multiply by the percentage change. So in this case, that's going to be a 1% change. So you multiply by 1%, and then you multiply by not Macaulay's duration. What you actually do is you take Macaulay's duration, and some very clever people notice because bonds aren't priced exponentially, they're calculated on a semi annual or a quarterly or even an annual basis, not using E or anything clever like that. That Macaulay's duration needs to be modified slightly to take account of that. So, what we do, if that's Macaulay's duration, we need to modify that slightly. So, we'll move that to something called modified duration, and that's basically equal to Macaulay's duration. And then that's divided by 1 plus the yield to maturity divided by the frequency of payments. And that will give you the modified duration figure you need for there. And then that will give you a price change. And that will give you something, you know, approximately $1 or 90 cents if you want to be absolutely precise. And then if interest rates go up, then the bond price will go down by 90 cents. And if interest rates go down, then the bond price should go up by approximately 90 cents. That's all that modified duration is about. Oh, this small range here, it works perfectly well enough. So bond traders know their kind of risk limits on a second by second, hour by hour, day by day basis for what kind of things are going to happen to their portfolios should interest rates change. What it's a bit like is the following diagram. If we take a picture of the planet Earth, so there's the planet Earth. Let's put in some continents. There we are, some continents there and a bit of sea. There we go. If we take a very, very, very small part of that, and that's my house near London. Okay, let's just take my house near London. That's what the Earth looks like to me. It looks, over a short distance, it looks very flat. However, if you take a longer distance, if you fly me to, say, New York, then what the Earth looks like to me in an aeroplane, if I'm going to fly to New York, it looks curved. So over a very, very short distance, the Earth is basically flat. And it's only over a long distance that the Earth is curved. So for short interest rate changes, modified duration is fine. If we go for bigger interest rate changes, then we have to take into account something called convexity, which is basically looking at this curve and seeing how much of an effect that has on the distance we're traveling in a particular great circle. So let's move then to a spreadsheet. Here's one I designed earlier. Now, virtually all of this has been seen in previous duration lectures. So to save time, I won't go through all of this again. One thing I have added, I've added this thing called payment frequency, because that is in the modified duration kind of calculation. So we do need to take it into account a little bit here. So I've got these uh, various things. You can see semi-annual there, annual there, and quarterly there. But I'm going to be very, very simple and just stick to annual payments. OK, let's move on then to working out modified duration. Now, following on again from our Macaulay's duration lectures, the way to do it here is very, very straightforward. This is just going to be equal to the Macaulay's duration. And then that's divided by one plus the periodic yield to maturity, which I've already calculated earlier, which is basically the annual yield to maturity divided by the payment frequency. And that will give you the modified duration. Notice slightly different, well, quite a bit different from the Macaulay's duration. If we make the periods much more kind of frequent, you can see there that quarterly ones mean that the Macaulay's duration and the modified duration come closer together. And if we took this to, you know, exponential infinity, then they would be the same. Anyway, let's take it back to annual payments. Now, that's a bit convoluted. You can look at the formula there. It looks a bit tricky. Before the end of the lecture, I'll label all of these key fields, but everything will get very messy if I do that now. But if you take a look at that formula there, that can get a bit tiresome to have to keep typing. So an easy way to do it is just to use Excel's built-in M duration formula. So we type in M duration, then we type in settlement, and then we go for maturity, and then we go for the coupon rates, then we go for the yield to maturity, then we go for the frequency, which is this thing here. 
and then we'll go for the basis. I'll use actual over actual brackets, and that gives us exactly the same as the mathematical calculation. And again, I will label that formula later on. Okay, let's put in a possible percentage change in our price. So let's say that the yield to maturity goes down by 1%. What's that going to do to the price? Well, we've got the price here. Let's just see, using our formula from the earlier drawing, what is the predicted price change? That's going to be equal to the price multiplied by the percentage change multiplied by the modified duration. So $2.62. So if interest rates go down by 1%, then the price should go up by $2.62. And if interest rates should go up by 1%, price should go down by $2.62. So let's just build up a graph to show you this kind of thing. Here what we'll do is we'll put the fixed yield to maturity at the moment and here what we'll do is we'll take 1% off so that's going to be equal to that one. Take away the percentage change and this one is going to be equal to the, yield to, the current yield to maturity plus the percentage change that might happen. That goes to 9%. Now, for these calculations, we do need the periodic yield to maturity. What that is, is if it's semi-annual, so I'll just make this semi-annual for a second, then this has to be half of the 7%. So what we'll do is we'll just say that's equal to that, divided by the frequency, and then we'll take that formula across. There we go. Uh, and then we'll go back to annual mode, just to make things nice and easy for understanding purposes. Okay, now the predicted prices at the current interest rate, these should be exactly the same as they are now. So we'll just put in the current price, and then this one's equal to the current price too. Now let's put in the predicted price change. So this one is going to go up, so that's going to be equal to that one, plus the predicted price change. There we are, 105.2. And this one is going to be equal to that take away the predicted price change. There we are. Now let's work out then, you wouldn't do this in real life, you'd have an infinity of data centers trying to work out all these particular potential price rises. But let's just in this special case actually work out the real price. So this is going to be equal to say minus one multiplied by PV. And now we need to put in the rate, which is this periodic yield to maturity, the number of periods, which is here, the payment, which is the coupon payment, and then the face value, which you'll get at the end, which is 100. And then we'll put in zero, which is the usual at the end of the period time. And you can see there that the price changes aren't too bad. It's only five cents out. Now there's a slight discrepancy again. This is, you know, if you're on the island of Manhattan walking one block, things look flat. But if you walk from one end of Manhattan to the other end of Manhattan, if you've got a big tape measure out, you'll notice there is a slight curvature of the earth. So the further the interest rates change, the more this becomes inaccurate. Let's just do the other one while we're here. So this is if interest rates go up. So this is going to be equal to minus one times the PV of this rate, which is that one there. Now the number of periods, which is here, the payment, which is the coupon payment, the face value at the end, which is that one there, and then the type, which I'll put zero standard. You can see again, we're five cents out in this particular case, but it's hardly discernible on this graph, hardly discernible at all. And most interest rate changes, you know, 0.25 would be a big change. You can see there's very little, there's no difference there. And there's very, very little microscopic difference there. Remember, these things are just used for predictions to work out your risks so you can hedge yourself. Things are constantly moving anyway. It's not worth getting into too much of a lather over it. If we put a huge interest rate change in, you should just be able to see at the very edges here, things are beginning to diverge. We are starting to get the effect of convexity, which tends to underestimate price rises and overestimate price decreases. And we'll explain that in the next lecture on convexity. Anyway, hopefully that's explained modified duration. It's basically Macaulay's duration, which has been tampered with slightly because bonds aren't priced on a kind of exponential continuous basis. And it basically says, take an interest rate change, multiply it by the modified duration, multiply it by the price, and that should give you a decent predicted price change for a bond over short interest rate changes. Now, just before we finish off, 
let me label all of the key fields so that you might want to play with this stuff yourself again later. So I'll just put them all in. Oh, that's got in the way there. Let's put that one up there. We'll put them all in, why not? So they will cover the graph, unfortunately. So if you want to see these yourselves later, feel free to play with all of these different things. So this was just equal to the price. Hopefully you can work all of these ones out. I just needed to halve that if it was semi-annual, the periodic maturity. So I'll just stick that there. This one's probably important. We'll just bring that down to there. And this one's probably important. You can work out the rest yourselves, I'm absolutely sure. So let me just leave that up for a few seconds. There's all of the key equations on this particular Excel sheet. If you want to see any of the others, they are on the previous lectures. OK, see you next time.